Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're going to take a look at some of the new swords that we just added to the KarateMart.com website. And I'm going to try to give you a better idea of what you should be looking for when you're buying a sword of your own. But before we begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. Alright guys, so here's what I did. I went back into the warehouse and I grabbed 10 different swords, all of which are just a little bit different from each other. So, without further ado, let's go on to our first sword. All right, so the first sword we're gonna look at is the traditional samurai katana. And I absolutely love this sword. I think it looks so cool. The design is very modern looking. The scabbard is just such a stunning looking scabbard. I think it's awesome. I think this would look great sitting on my mantle at home, but there's some aspects of it that allow it to be a little less expensive than other katana. And that's what we need to look at. So first off, let's just look at the suba. The Suba is this kind of modern looking Suba, and it looks awesome. Like, I like how flat it is, and it's got these little cherry blossoms in it. Pretty unique looking Suba, so I really like that about it. Um, the scabbard, the scabbard's unique in itself. So when you buy a katana, a lot of the time you'll see that they have wooden scabbards that are lacquered nicely and just glossed up. This one's actually made out of a PVC, so it's a little bit different. Now, there are some benefits to a PVC scabbard. Like for instance, they won't mold and they won't warp if they get wet. So that's actually a really good benefit to having a PVC scabbard. It's a little bit lighter, but um, I think it just looks phenomenal. So I see that as a plus to this sword, honestly. Now let's look at the sword itself. So the first thing you have to note is this is actually made with a 1045 carbon steel. 1045 is a pretty standard steel for swords. It's actually kind of on the low end of the high carbon steel blades that they use for swords, but it also allows it to be just a little less expensive than some of the more premium swords. Like if you're gonna buy a really nice sword, you wanna look for at least a 1060 carbon steel blade. 1045 is good though. I mean, there's really not a lot wrong with it. It's just a little bit softer, so it's not gonna be able to hold the edge as long. But um, overall, not bad. Not bad for 90% for of people, 1045 is gonna be fine. So let's just look at the blade itself. So first off, if we look at this, we can see that it's got this kind of wavy hamon line to it. And um, if you look closely enough, you can tell that that hamon line was actually added for aesthetic purposes. That's not a real authentic hamon line, which most people aren't gonna notice that. I mean, it looks legitimate, but it's just one of those things you need to watch for if you're looking for a really high-end sword. Now, I personally think this sword is awesome, so that doesn't bother me, but for some people it will. Then we have to look at the fuller on the blade. We can see that it's got a pretty nice fuller or blood groove as some people refer to it. And um, that kind of gives the sword a little bit more of an aesthetic appeal, plus it takes some weight off the blade. Um, looks pretty cool. I mean, I like seeing a nice double-sided fuller on my swords. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, but here's the things that are dead giveaways about this sword. So if we look at the handle of the sword, we can see that it's nice and traditionally wrapped, which looks great. We can also see that it's got some dragon manuki into the wrapping, which gives it a little bit more characteristic to the sword, so I actually like that. But let's look really, really closely. So we can tell if we look really closely that that is a synthetic ray skin. That's not actual authentic ray skin on that sword handle. So that's one of those things where you know, there are some people that really prefer a synthetic ray skin for their own reasons, but it's one of those things where you really need to know that a sword should be priced less if it uses a synthetic ray skin. So that's one of the things that keeps the sword at a really low price. I actually really like this sword. I think it's awesome, um, but let's go ahead and look at another sword. All right, the next sword we're gonna look at is the Copper Storm Katana. And again, this is one of our more inexpensive swords on KarateMart.com. And it's actually really cool. Let's take a look at it really quick. All right, so the most unique feature about this sword is obviously the blade. It has this unique wind pattern on the blade that just looks awesome. We're seeing this more and more on swords lately and I absolutely love it. It just kind of makes each sword a little more unique, looks awesome, um, but here's the thing. If I touch the blade, you can tell that it's not as sharp as a standard katana. And that seems to be the case with all of this type of blade. 
You can sharpen this though. You definitely could, but it's gonna actually take off some of the coloring on the blade. And I actually think that would look fine with a little bit of the coloring removed, but um, that's something you should really note if you're thinking about buying something like this. Now, um, different from the last sword we looked at, the scabbard is actually made out of wood. And it's made with this high gloss black, which looks really, really awesome. It's got the traditional wrapping on the handle, which is that light brown color. And I love that light brown color. You can see that it's on the suka as well, which looks really awesome. It's actually got an iron suba on this one and it, it feels really nice. Like a really, it feels like a high quality suba. So I like that a lot. Um, now again, we're dealing with that imitation ray skin underneath the wrap. So that always kind of bothers me a little bit but um, a lot of people like it, as I said. All right, if we look closer at the handle, you can see that it's got the little dragon Manuki underneath the wrap, which is really cool. I like those little tiny accent pieces that they'll add to swords just to give them a little bit more character. So uh, really, this is a pretty sweet sword, especially for its price. So I like that a lot. I can't think of much else to tell you about it other than I guess it is a 1045 carbon steel blade. So let's go ahead and put that away and move on to a next sword. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is called the Crimson Warrior Hand Forge Katana. And this one's just a step up from the last two we were looking at. So I just wanna show you some of the differences that make this just a little bit better quality. So first off, let's take a look at the handle. That's probably the most important part. So we can see the, that the Manuki just look like they're a little better quality in there. So I like that. The wrapping looks like it's like a little bit nicer traditional cotton wrapping. So that's cool. But the main difference is that if we look at the ray skin, you can tell that that's authentic ray skin. And I don't know if you can see that on video, but there is a difference between that and the synthetic ray skin. So that's pretty awesome. Um, one of the other big differences about this sword is if we look at the blade, we can see that it is a 1060 carbon steel blade, which 1060 is honestly a really good material for a sword blade. Uh, it's, uh, it allows for some flexibility, but it's still hard enough to keep an edge to it. So pretty good for a sword. I mean, you can get a 1095, but there are people out there who state that a 1095 is just a little bit too hard, so it becomes brittle. So 1060 is honestly a really good blade for a katana. Now here's one of the other things you've got to notice. So if we look closely at the blade, we can see that it has an actual authentic hamon line to it. Um, unlike the other two that we were looking at where you could tell that they just added the hamon line for aesthetic appeal. So I really like that about the sword. Um, let's, let's also look at the suba. The suba is just awesome. Look at that detail on it. I think that looks so cool. It looks like some sort of plant pattern or something. I like it. I think it looks awesome. Um, not much more to say about this. The, uh, the red color on the wooden scabbard looks really unique and nice. I like seeing swords that have like different characteristics to them that make them stand out from other swords. So I actually really like this sword. Again, this one is called the Crimson Warrior Hand Forge Katana. A really nice sword. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so I've been waiting for this one because I'm really, really excited about it. This is called the Handmade Ceremonial Tachi Sword. And I think it is one of the most stunning swords we actually carry on KarateMart.com. Just a beautiful, beautiful sword. Now there's some differences between a Tachi sword and a Katana. The Tachi were actually a predecessor to the Katana, and so they're just a little bit different. They're generally a little bit longer, and they generally have a little bit more curvature to the blade, and they're worn just a little bit differently. But nowadays, you see them more used for like ceremonial type purposes. But let's take a closer look at this. So first off, let's look at the scabbard. The scabbard is just stunning. It's actually a wooden scabbard, but it feels like it's metal or something. Like it's got some sort of metallic coating on it. Looks just awesome. It's like a gold colored and it's got these engraved little samurai on there, which just look so cool. Now it's also got these little powder coated accent pieces all over it. And I want to show you on the sword itself. So if we look at the suba on this, this is actually a brass suba but it's like powder coated to be like a silver color and it's got these little bronze accent pieces in it. I think it looks just so stunning. And it's got these beautiful little Manuki hooked into the wrap of the handle, which just give it a little bit more character. And the wrapping around the handle is this awesome light brown color. 
And you can see underneath the wrapping, that is an actual authentic ray skin. So that's nice. I like that a lot. So one of the unique characteristics of Tachi is they often have this thing up top called a sarute. And it's kind of interesting, like the way it works is you'd actually hook a little cord from that onto your wrist. So if you're in battle and you lose your sword, it's still hooked onto your wrist. So I think that's a unique characteristic of a Tachi sword that's just really, really cool. So let's look at the blade. This is actually a 1060 carbon steel blade. It's a nice blade. And we can see that it has an authentic Hamon line. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But it's actually a really beautiful Hamon line. So overall, just a really, really nice sword. I love these type of swords. I think these type of swords are great, like for ceremonial purposes, something to get for your instructor for Christmas or something. I love this type of thing. But let's look at the case that it comes with. So all of the swords we've shown off so far came with a sword bag. But this one actually comes with this wooden box, which is really, really nice for storage. And it comes with a little sword care kit. And let's just look in here. So in the sword care kit, it looks like we've got some oils and a powder ball, some cloths, some rice paper, and a little mini hammer, all stuff to care for your sword properly. And there's actually a little instructional booklet that it comes with to kind of show you how to care for your sword. So really, really awesome. Um, one thing I want to mention too is, um, on this video, if you see me touch a blade to kind of show off a, a specific characteristic of it, we're gonna clean the blade afterwards. So it's not good to be touching sword blades because the oils from your hand can actually start to corrode the blade. So we always clean the sword blades after a video, just so you're aware of that. But uh, let's put this one away and actually move on to something else. All right, so the next sword we're gonna look at is called the Natural Wood Hand Forged Shirasaya. Now, um, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to Shirasaya swords. Uh, if you watch Hollywood movies or TV shows, you often see them being used for combat, but that's actually not what these are all about. So, back in feudal Japan, they would have a bladesman or a blacksmith actually make the blade for your sword. And that same person often wouldn't be the one who would make your suba, or your handle. Um, so they would take the blade and they'd put it into a casing like this for transportation or storage while the other parts of the sword were being made. So I think they still look awesome, not really for combat, but this thing actually would look awesome on the mantle in your house or in your dojo. Really cool looking, but let's just look at the specifics of it. So it's got this nice natural gloss scabbard to it actually looks really, really pretty. And let's look at the blade of this thing. All right, so we've got the, the blood groove in there, looks nice. Uh, the blade itself is a 1045 carbon steel. And um, again, we can see that it's more of a aesthetically placed Hamon line, so not a real Hamon line. Um, but overall, a really cool looking inexpensive sword. So. I like these, I think they're pretty awesome. Uh, not much else to really tell you about it. Let's move on to the next sword. All right, so our next sword is called the Black Venom Carbon Steel Katana. And this is one of our swords that's just a little bit higher end. So one of the main characteristics about it is it actually has a 1095 carbon steel blade, which is a little bit stronger blade, can keep an edge a little bit longer, but 1095 does have the reputation of sometimes being so hard that it can turn out to be a little bit brittle. But we haven't had that issue at all with these. These actually seem really nice. And if we look closely at the blade, you can see that it's got a very authentic Hamon line to it. Like looks really, really nice. I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but um, it looks really, really nice and the natural Hamon line. The Suba is a solid brass Suba. It's actually pretty beefy and it's got these little snakes that kind of weave in and out of the suba, and I absolutely love that. And then there's some other characteristics about it. We can see that there's a snake up here on the pommel. There's some snakes for the manuki in the handle. Looks really awesome. I mean, I like the traditional wrapping to it. That's definitely an authentic ray skin in there. Really, really a nice sword. And then if we look at the scabbard, that is a nice wooden scabbard that's just been glossed up beautifully. Again, this comes with a sword bag like many of our other swords. It's awesome. So let's go on to something else. 
All right, so the next sword we're gonna look at is called the Full Tang Tactical Katana. And this is one of our more inexpensive swords on KarateMar.com, but there's a couple of reasons I grabbed this sword to show to you. For one, all the swords we showed previous to this had the traditional handles on them, where this one actually has this ABS plastic handle on it, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's comfortable, and it actually has a more modern look and feel to it. So I kind of like that about it. Um, the other thing about it that's kind of cool is if we look at it closely, we can see that it's actually a full tang blade going all the way down the handle. So that's that's really nice. Now, um, on the blade itself, we can see that it's got the, the long fuller or blood groove going down the length of the blade, which will take off some weight on it, which is nice. But one of the unique things about it is there is no hamon line on this blade at all. So they didn't even put on a hamon line just for aesthetic appeal. I kind of like that actually. I mean, a lot of the time those hamon lines that are just added there for aesthetic appeal can be kind of deceiving. So I kind of like it. It gives the blade more of a sleek type of look. So that's pretty cool. Now let's just look at the scabbard really quick. So the scabbard is a wooden scabbard and it's been painted black. It's got that rounded end to it, which is very unique. And then it's got this kind of splattered paint finish to it, which I kind of like, I'm, I'm actually really digging this sword. So very unique looking sword. Um, I like the tactical look of it, but let's go ahead and put that away and move on to the next one. All right, so the next sword we're gonna look at is the Unsharpened Training Katana. This is actually a really nice looking sword. And I know what you're saying, you're asking yourself, hey Kyle, why would I want an unsharpened katana? And that is a great question. So if you're new to swords and you're learning new sword techniques, it's a lot safer to use an unsharpened katana. It's great for younger students. It's great for martial arts schools. Uh, I just want to feel the blade. Now we're going to clean the blade after, but yeah, there's no sharpness to that at all. Definitely safer. Now the point is sharp. So you could get hurt with the point of the blade, but overall a much safer sword to practice with. So let's just look at the blade. This is a 1045 carbon steel blade. It's got the fuller all the way down on both sides, which is really nice. That takes off some weight. Overall, as far as weight goes, this thing feels really, really comfortable. And the handle, the handle is my favorite part of this. Like it's got that thick black cotton wrapping around. It feels really comfortable. Underneath the wrapping, we can see it's got the dragon manuki under there, which is really nice. And this is actual genuine ray skin. So really, really good for a training katana. Uh, let's look at the Suba. So this has actually got that crane design for the Suba which is really nice looking. I mean, it looks really pretty. I mean, there's some, some things on this that just give it a really nice aesthetic appeal. So, oh, and then as far as aesthetic appeal goes, we can see that it's got that kind of aesthetically added hamon line to the bottom of it. Really nice. I mean, it's a good looking training katana. So I really like it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. Let's move on to something else. All right, so the next sword we're gonna look at is the Qing Dynasty sword. So this is a Chinese Dao sword, similar to those used in Imperial China. Now, unlike a Chinese long sword, this sword actually has a slightly curved single edge blade, and you can see it's got a slightly curved handle to it. So that would have made them good for thrusting or slashing or slicing. Actually a pretty cool sword for that. If we look at the blade, the blade is actually made out of a spring steel, which is fairly common to Chinese swords because of its ability to spring back into shape. Um, it's sharpened really nicely, like actually super sharp. So I like that. It's got a fuller or a blood groove kind of going down the top. On both sides, it's actually got a double fuller, which is pretty cool. So that takes off a little bit of weight and just gives it some aesthetic appeal. So I like that a lot about it. The handle and the scabbard have this matte black finish to it, which is really nice. And it's got all these little ornate gold features on the scabbard and on the pommel and on the handguard, which just make it look really nice. I mean, that is a solid handguard on there. I actually really like the look of that. I'm just gonna show it off on camera. Looks pretty awesome. So overall, I really like this Chinese sword. I think it's really nice looking. Um, let's go on to something else. All right, so we're on to the last sword of the day. So that's exciting. This is the Ming 
Dynasty Sword, which is a Chinese Jian style sword, and honestly one of our most unique swords that we carry, so I love it. The, the most prominent thing about it to me is how heavy it is. This is actually about five pounds in total, but if we take off the scabbard, the sword itself only weighs about two and a half pounds, which is still pretty heavy. So let's look at the blade on here. So unlike the last Chinese sword we looked at, this one actually has a 1060 carbon steel blade, and yeah, it's actually really sharp. And one of the most noticeable features about it is it's actually a double fullered blade. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but um, it's very apparent in person. We've got this double fullered going down both sides, and what that does is that actually takes off a little bit of the weight to the sword, so that's really nice. One of my favorite features of this sword is all the ornate, heavy, brass-plated castings all over the hilt of the sword and all over the scabbard. I mean, if we look at this, let's just look up close. That just looks beautiful. I mean, it does make the scabbard and the sword fairly heavy, but in my opinion, totally worth it because it's such a unique looking sword. I just love it. And then if we look at the handguard on the sword, it's got this lion head on it, which is super detailed and awesome. And then the pommel has this dragon in there. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It just looks stunning. So I really love everything about this sword. I think it's so cool. And then it comes with this little storage case, which is, you know, really nice to be able to put your sword away when you're done. So I don't know. I think that's just an awesome sword. But if you have any questions on this sword or any of the other swords I showed off on this video, definitely leave them in the comments below. But make sure you check out KarateMart.com because we've got all sorts of different swords that I didn't show off in this video. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.